G'day YouTube, welcome back to my channel, 1MJ here. Well, as the title says, could we be in for a sub $8,000 dump from BTC? I've been through the, yeah, through the net and sort of found some stories that I found interesting, and they're all quite contradictory to each other really. Some are really positive and pumping it, uh, and most of them are kind of pumping it, but there's a couple that are kind of negative as well. And one of the things that uh, I have learned in my time uh, in the crypto space, is at least somewhat regularly, Bitcoin will do the opposite of what everyone's thinking. And most people are thinking it's gonna go up at the moment. Now I'm hoping it goes up, but I have a sneaky suspicion we might have another correction coming in. And it's mainly to do with this story here. Correlation between Bitcoin price and stocks reaches a new all-time high. Now, this is uh, what we don't want. But institutional money has gotten involved into Bitcoin uh, and now they are playing out quite like stocks. When stocks go down, Bitcoin goes down. And when stocks go up, Bitcoin goes up. And then obviously the rest of the crypto space does as well. So here it says, lately Bitcoin price has been showing record high levels of correlation with traditional markets. And on July 9th, the correlation between the S&P 500 and BTC reached an all-time high, a new all-time high. Data from SKU shows that one year realized correlation reaches 0.38 on Thursday, July 9th, and this came after the metric had reached new highs earlier in the week. Now there is some sort of good news though that goes with, goes with that. The correlation with traditional markets has been growing at a steady pace recently. This isn't the good news just yet. <laughs> With one year reaching, uh, with one year reaching consecutive new all-time highs, data from SKU also shows that one uh, that the one-month figure also reached its all-time high of 0.78 on Wednesday, but has since dropped to 61.5. So, I mean, all investments have a bit of correlation. That's just the way it is. Sometimes they can uh, operate in the complete opposite direction of each other, but generally speaking. If something's going up, other than the one odd kind of stock, but they're all kind of going up or all going down, pretty much everything will do the same, but there might be an outlier here and there that acts uh, different. And so at the moment, it's good to see that at least we've slightly moved away from that, but we'll have to wait and see. So that's what has me really concerned that we might see a bit of a drop. And if we go down here, as the price continues to find resistance at the $9,300 level, the change of a sharp downside correction continues to increase. At least in their opinion, they could be right. For this reason, traders are viewing 9,500 as the short-term level Bitcoin price needs to break. Failure to do so increases the risk that the price could drop to or below the $8,000 level. Now my gut feeling at the moment says, I think we're gonna have a bit of a dump and we might actually test that $8,000 level. Um, as I've shown from my chart before, so this is the long-term chart, but you can see we're trading in this kind of channel here. And like I said, the average price for Bitcoin, so I'll zoom out again, has been in this range here over the last three years. It's been roughly between $6,000 and $8,000. Now currently we're trading above it, and as you can see, we're kind of following this trough and on a bit of a downward slope. Considering where we came from when we were right outside of the trend lines, and I've said in my other videos, I actually think we could keep going down and we might actually bump off this sort of $8,000 level and then hopefully start another pullback because if everyone's kind of long, chances are it'll probably go short. And then when everyone starts to get real short on it, then it'll go long. I would be somewhat worried if we dropped below this $8,000 level, but I wouldn't really be in sort of panic mode until we were below the $6,000 level, that would be concerning. And if we got below today, what would roughly be 5,000, then I'd definitely be concerned. Again, I'm more looking for us to bump off this and also the 200-day uh, moving average. I don't have it up at the moment, but uh, the 200-day moving average, I'm pretty sure is around about that $8,000 level at the moment. So that's what I'm looking for, but we do have some good news as well. So Binance, they've come out with their card. As I said the other day, uh, Binance bought out Swipe uh, and now they've released their own card and you're going to be able to use it as a debit card so you can actually spend your crypto but it'll pay the retailer in whatever cash uh, 
they sort of not so much desire but where they're from so if you're using your Binance card in America then it's going to pay out the American dollar if you're using it in Australia it'll pay out the Australian dollar and so on with all the other companies and Binance have fiat gateways across just about every nation I don't think there'd be too many that they're missing at the moment they added a 15 uh, new fiat gateways just the other day so that's really really good for Binance and this is the stuff that we need I've said before and I'll say it again adoption is the key and we really need that mass adoption if we can make it easy for people to spend their crypto now a lot of us want to hodl and hold but the average kind of Joe if they're going to get invested into cryptos they're just going to want to be able to spend it at the same time they're not all going to want to hold it then they've got to have two different money systems so now I've got to have my normal fiat money and this crypto money it'll just be too hard for some people they want one thing that works so this is crypto and fiat put into one and that is that bridging gap that is going to bridge crypto and fiat and eventually we'll be done with fiat when that's going to happen I can't tell you exactly but I don't think we're too far off I know here in Australia people use cash but not very many and there was an article a while ago saying that uh, the Australian government said they will keep printing cash as long as there's people that want to use it but it is kind of the older generation that still use cash and still go to banks and you know they want cash uh, taken out and they want to be able to put cash in and things like that but a majority of Australia we're moving away we're already a, a semi-digital sort of uh, monetary system anyway so this is key well done CZ and well done Binance but now we've got some positive stuff over here so data suggests Bitcoin price will rise as invested uh, demographic shifts so again, this is what makes me think that we're probably going to take a bit of a dump. A lot of the, a lot of the sentiment out there at the moment are, is fairly positive, and everyone sees Bitcoin going up. And look, don't get me wrong. Long term, I see Bitcoin going up. I see it going up by quite a lot. But I think at the moment there's definitely some manipulation and things going on. People want to keep it short. Uh, you know, I have my gut feeling about why that is, and I think there's people trying to load up, and so they keep uh, shorting not so much shorting but they're selling their Bitcoin as it's going up to lower the price and then they come back in and buy it up you know things like Grayscale and other big institutional buyers and I'm not saying Grayscale is doing that but they want to get as much as they can at the cheapest price as does every other institutional uh, buyer so my gut feeling is that's what's happening and you know we've had Coinbase and I think it was Bitfinex every time Bitcoin gets to around about ten thousand dollars all of a sudden they basically you know come up with these technical difficulties and aren't working and that prevents us from going above that ten thousand dollar level I think they have an agenda as well I think they want Bitcoin at the cheapest price because they'd be buying up Bitcoin right now themselves I'm sure the uh, and this is all the OTC stuff and that's why the prices aren't being uh, pushed up so high from so much being bought because it's that OTC stuff it's not uh, it's not affecting our sort of regular market but at some stage, all that will start to dry up and that's when the prices will start to go up. So that's my gut feeling is I think that there's definitely some manipulation going on to keep the price low at the moment. But long term, I think Bitcoin's going to have a big rise. I just I feel like we might have a bit of a sell off and we might get around to that $8,000 range. Now here's another one. I guess this is kind of positive news as well. There are over 13,000 Bitcoin addresses worth a million dollars. So that basically says there's around about 13,000 sort of possible whales. Not that really a million dollars worth of Bitcoin makes you a whale. A whale would be more than millions, but I can tell you right now, I don't have anywhere near a million dollars worth of uh, Bitcoin, and I don't know anyone that has a million dollars worth of Bitcoin. I'm sure there's plenty out there, but even if you had a million dollars worth of Bitcoin, that doesn't exactly make you a wow, but that's 13,000 people in the world that have more than a million dollars worth of Bitcoin. Uh, and I'm guessing they're probably holding on to it at the moment and slightly, again, like I said before, manipulating the market. Now, another interesting one I found was uh, Mr. Kiyosaki. I really like this guy. Uh, I recommend everybody should read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It is an absolutely cracking read. Now, it, it takes a while to kind of get the picture. But something that I really took from this, and it stuck with me, and I only read this six months ago. He says there's two types of people in this world. 99% of the world work for a living. 
1% of the world make money, sorry, it is 99% of the world are work to make money and 1% of the world make money work for them. And that has stuck with me. <laughs> uh, I can't, it really sort of changed my whole percep- perception on the way money works and things like that from reading his book. And that one quote alone, and I just thought, that is so true. Basically, everyone I know, they go to week forty out. They go to work forty hours a week, if not more, to make money. But there's a couple of really smart people that I know that they just make money work for them. They still work a nine to five job, but they are getting closer and closer to the point where they won't have to work again, and everything will work for them. And that really kind of changed my perception on money and how things work, and really got me hard into crypto and things like that. So, yeah. Smart guy, read his book, and like I said, uh, great book. Anyway, we'll get on to what he's saying about. So the, uh, as he said, uh, you know, Bitcoin is changing. Uh, Bitcoin's in, real estate and gold are out, warns uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad author. And what I like here is he says, I think it's important, especially for old guys like himself, and I'm 40 plus, so I'm kind of falling into that category a bit, but to understand the crypto world because that's the world that's coming into view right now and us real estate and gold guys are being phased out now i don't think gold's going to be phased out and real estate is definitely not going to be phased out but they are going to be tokenized it won't be long i mean you can already buy gold back cryptos these days so gold's even getting uh on the on the crypto uh side of thing being tokenized and so is uh real estate it's getting uh tokenized and it won't be long until you know, when you own something, it will be on the blockchain. You'll be able to buy parts of it or sell parts of it. It's all coming. And he is a very, very smart guy and he uh, predicted the last financial crash and he's been predicting this one coming for a long time as well. So, yeah, very interesting. Uh, Anyone who's not uh, at least just having some kind of an understanding of crypto I think is really going to fall behind and when it all kind of happens and it all flips over they're just going to be behind the eight ball Uh, and again that quote that he said you know 99 percent of people work to make money i want to be that one percent that makes money work for me so last but not least market wrap trades by traders buy the dip and bitcoin holds at nine thousand two hundred so again, we've had a bit of a dip. We've really been ranging between sort of 9,500 and you know, we've even dipped down to around that $8,900 mark. Uh, and we're just ranging in between there. And my gut feeling is I think we're going to have a bit of a sell off and we might get down to around about the $8,000 range. I don't think we'll stay down there for too long. I think we will get down there and might hang there for a few days and it'll just slowly start to creep its way back up again. But that's my gut feeling at the moment and I believe that there's people out there that want to keep Bitcoin cheap at the moment so they can buy as much as they can before it starts to skyrocket. So I think there's a lot of uh, OTC uh, purchasing of Bitcoin being done uh, and it's not on the exchanges and that's what's really uh, holding the price so low and they're even active on the markets to keep the prices low because you can go to... uh, wholesalers for bitcoin and buy it but if the market says it's worth fourteen thousand dollars you're not going to be buying it for nine thousand dollars you might be buying it for thirteen thousand dollars you know you might get a discount of a thousand dollars per bitcoin so the big institutional buyers they need it to stay cheap so they can just keep accumulating it and i reckon they are constantly are buying and selling to keep it low on the markets but doing mass buys Uh, from the miners and things like that and again we have a look here bitcoins you know we were up here only a few months ago so this is back in february and then you know we had the big uh covid basically how else can you say it you know we had the pandemic and everything just tanked and dropped off and then we are slowly worked our way back up we've traded sideways and i think we're going to sort of come down and we're going to test this eight thousand dollar level That's just my personal opinion. Anyway, I'd love to know what you think. Drop me a comment. Do you think we're just going to keep going up from here or do you see maybe a bit of a sell-off coming and that we do test this $8,000 mark? And again, I think the $8,000 mark is around about where the 200-day moving average is at the moment. So 
interesting to see. I'd love to know your thoughts. Uh, if you enjoy my content, uh, please hit the like button. It'll help my content get seen by more. Uh, and I could definitely use a few more people <laughs> seeing my videos at the moment. Likewise, if you enjoy my content, uh, subscribe. That'd really help as well. And just leave a comment if you think that there's something I can do better. I'm open to uh, constructive criticism and I am trying to work on my uh, vlogs. Definitely want to try and keep them daily and just make the content a bit better uh, and the vlogs themselves. Anyway, that's it from me. The market's up a little bit today, which is good. So stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully everyone made uh, a bit of profit today and I'm out.